Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we are taking another look at the Verbal Throttle and Stick combination that was provided to me a few months back and we're going to talk about whether or not they are still worth the price and the weight that you may have to sit out in order to get your own set. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come along down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below and thank you to all of my current subscribers. Okay, guys, so first off, I have made absolutely no secret that I love these controls. I want to make that very, very clear. But this video is going to go into a bit more of why I love them. The biggest thing about Verpal that I want everyone to be aware of, and if you're not already aware of, I should say, is the weight that it takes to get them and the cost. Um, they are definitely not what you would call cheap by any means. However, that not cheap price tag comes with some extremely, extremely welcomed benefits of using these particular controls. First off, they are extremely ergonomic. They feel very, very nice in the hands and they are very customizable. The configuration options on the uh, flight stick alone is so well done. Everything from the cams that can be switched out to create a different type of detent, the springs that can be adjusted and uh, changing the tension and the auto centering of the stick if you want auto centering. You can literally remove the auto centering by just turning a couple of screws. So that is actually very handy. For example, a helicopter flight. Um, if you want to fly that much more realistic uh, aspect of a helicopter, you would disable the centering of the stick. And that would remove the need, for example, using things like force trim and whatnot. When I first got the throttle all up and running, I felt it looked a little arcadey and was a little concerned that I wasn't going to like it. And then after, gosh, it was very short time frame after using it, I found all the advantages to being able to use these products. And they are both um, extremely useful, whether you are a Microsoft Flight Simulator pilot, X-Plane, P3D, DCS World, um, or even something like uh, Falcon BMS, or any of those other flight simulations or combat videos. It really doesn't matter whether you go combat or if your thing is um, just civilian aviation. They have a plethora of buttons and controls and switches and customization options. One of the cool things about the throttle here is that it's got the different modes color coded to each mode. And we can change all of this in the software. And we'll talk about that later on in the video here, but just has a ton of different options. Each rotary uh, works and is a push button. So you have your volume and your radio channel controls, depending on what you want to do, maybe some internal lighting. Um, you have buttons all over this thing. So the need to use third-party software to map your controls, especially in something like DCS World, is almost eliminated because you have so many different customization options that come with the sheer number of buttons that are available on these controllers. Getting back to the flight stick for a second, one of the things that really makes it stand out from the others is that the base is sold separately. Now, a lot of people will think, well, this is what makes it so expensive, and you're not wrong. It is. When you have to buy the base separately from the grip, um, that definitely <laughs> brings the price tag up quite a bit. You can pick up everything that I've shown here, the base, the CM3 flight stick base, the CM3 throttle, and the grip here for, I believe it was just under $900. Um, so it's not cheap by any means, but let's talk about why this is such an actually advantageous thing. 
First off, with the base being separate, you have multiple grip options that you can purchase from Verpal, depending on what your flight experience is and what you're actually going for. Uh, they have a couple of different types of grips, so whether your thing is space simulation or fighter simulation, general aviation, you have a couple of different options. You can really uh, get that grip that really suits best for what you're looking for. They even have a pretty darn close replica to the F-14. So it really depends on what you're going for. And the uh, removal is very simple. Just unscrew that. It's got a nice long dongle. Plug it in, screw it back down, you're off and to the races. Um, and with the base being sold separately, the other really awesome thing that I really enjoy about that is the removal, obviously, that we talked about of the grip. But then being able to come in and separately configure the base as well, again, based on your preferences. The And I'm going to have a link down in the description below, guys, to my previous video and reviews on these, where I go through the entire assembly process of all of this stuff. Um, and uh, it's it's quite intensive. And, and what I mean by intensive is you have a lot of options to pick from. Like I said, you have different tension springs, you have different cams you can put in with different detents, different tensions. You can really dial these things in. And what's beautiful about this is there's no gimbal. It's all metal assembly. Um, and you have an X and a Y axis that are separate and that they rotate again inside of a cam. And then you have tension springs uh, that determine obviously what the pressure point is of those cams. And then the smoothness and, and radius of the cams will determine what your, what your uh, X and uh, Y axis movement actually feels like. So for example, mine has no center detent here but it's also much stiffer. I used a much stiffer cam, so my range of motion is very limited, and I liked it like that. That's how I wanted it. Now, one of the cool things about this is you can also get extensions for these that make that small movement even more valuable, because up here, that movement is going to look more like this, where down here, as you can see, it's very, um, it's very short-ranged. Now, the other thing about this that I really love about the CM3s, or the verbal controls in general, is precision. They are so freaking precise. Um, whether you are doing air-to-air -air refueling, flying in formation, or just really trying to uh, nail down a very specific turn angle or whatever it may be, they are extremely precise. Now, I will say from my experience, these uh, uh, control sets really do shine the most in like DCS world. But as you guys can see here, Here's the cockpit. You guys have seen this before. This is the same cockpit that I use for all of my videos. I do not swap out anymore for, you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator. I use these exclusively. I don't use anything else. My Bravo Throttle Quadrant and, and Alpha Yoke have been in the closet for months now. Um, and that's not to say anything against them. I just, I love flying these that much. They just feel good. And the customization options and all the different features. And I can control literally everything that I need just about from just these two uh, devices here. Now, I've got all the other stuff cool. That, and that really just increases the immersion, makes it more fun. But what you have here is, yes, $900. Let's call it what it is. Let's call it what it's going to cost you to get there. But of something that I can only see me buying once. The build quality, and, and again, coming from a diehard Thrustmaster Warthog fan for, God, five years, I think I used that thing, maybe longer, six, seven, I, I, heck, I don't know. And I swore multiple times over and over again that if I ever needed to replace them, I would do it that day. I, I could never go back. If I ever had to replace these, I would do it that day. But I don't see me needing to. And that is because as a Thrustmaster fan like I was, the build quality build quality of these two devices is far superior to Thrustmaster. And again, so the reason why I say this, for example, when I first got my Thrustmaster stick, uh, the ball and knuckle gimbal that it has inside of it uh, had a lot of um, flash still on it. It's, it, it had stick points in it. I had to take it apart, sand it, reshape it, clean it up, then re-grease it. They used a very lightweight silicone grease. I ended up putting some uh, axle bearing grease, or uh, excuse me, not axle bearing, but just bearing some bearing grease in it, for, uh, wheel bearing grease for automotive, uh, something that was high temp and wouldn't break down. And that, that solved all my problems, but it was a lot of effort to get it there. I had to I had to take it apart multiple times to really get it cleaned up. These were plug and play, man. Absolutely plug and play. After the calibration process and after we got into the software, it was it was a done deal. These things were absolutely sweet. 
Um, and uh, so now let's go ahead and let's take a look at the software so you guys can see what some of the customization options are and how well you can truly control uh, these pieces of equipment to your liking. Okay, so now we are back at the desktop. Hopefully the audio is a bit better now. Um, hopefully not worse. So here we have the Verpal configuration tool. Now, first off, the first thing that you want to do is you're going to create a profile. You guys can watch through, again, my previous videos on how to set it up and configure it. What I'm more interested in displaying today is some of the really awesome tools with it. Um, so again, you can see here we have the throttle. Okay, and it's gonna read all this, that's totally fine. Tells you your access positions, all that good jazz. Um, but one of the biggest things, and it does take a bit to get used to, like a lot, of, a lot of this looks really daunting, but you don't have to, you don't have to mess with all this stuff. This is all, it gets very advanced, uh, but you can create your own access curves. You do wanna calibrate the access, obviously, when you first install them, that's a critical part. But the bigger things that I wanna get into is like the buttons. You can change what their state is and how they function. Um, and you can, for example, here's the LED configuration that I was showing you guys on the rotary. Here's position one. Okay, so position one, you guys can see um, is, uh, let's see here, this one here, sorry, disables the LEDs completely, so it turns it off. And you can have that set for all of them if you guys don't want those LEDs to light up, or you can change the color at your choosing. Uh, so it really makes, a, you know, just that simple part very very easily to do um, as far as the button states you can come down in for example you can add a button if you ne if necessary for example you can see all these empty button slots if your game or simulator is not detecting all the button positions so let me give you an example the thrustmaster warthog okay um, only recognizes one position, right? When you go into DCS world on the two position switches or really any of them, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't recognize that the button is released. Okay, there is no coding that sends that over to DCS. So one of the biggest problems, like if you wanted to have one of your switches on the Thrustmaster Warthog be the um, uh, master arm, right? So you would flip the switch up, your master arm comes on. Then you would flip the switch down or a landing gear. Let's do landing gear. Landing gear, that way it works for all simulators, right? We wanted one of our switches on the Thrustmaster Warthog to be the landing gear. You flip the switch up, landing gear uh, comes up. But then when you flip the switch back down, nothing happens. It's because the button is all it is is a release of a button. It's not actually sending a new command um, or, or engaging a new circuit, if you will. With the throttle or the thrustmaster gosh i can't talk with the verbal software here you can change that i had that issue with the little red toggle switches that are on the verbal uh they were only being recognized in one direction dcs world i was able to come in here and change that functionality to where also it recognizes both directions and then i was able to go into dcs world and just map it i didn't have to worry about keyboard commands i didn't have to worry about having a third piece of software running the other really cool part is once you make all of your configuration changes and yes i'm not showing all that in uh, uh, intentionally because again it, it drags out takes some time i'm trying to keep this as short as i can so i maintain your attention here um but one of the cool things is once you get it all configured and you uh, save it to the VPC device, right? You don't have to have this software running every time after that, it just works. It saves actually directly onto the hardware itself. So it's got its own uh, cache there, if you will. And that's really awesome. Even with the Thrustmaster, you, if you were using the Thrustmaster target software, you have to have the target software running every single time in order for that to work. Um, where this you don't you configure the buttons the way you want them hit your save hit load etc close it down and and you're and you're done um, and uh, again here's all your LED configurations that can be changed and set up the way you like um, here's your different profiles you can create different profiles based on what you're doing so what you could do is simply swap to a different profile you know if, if you're going from space to flight sim save it load it and then close the software and you're off to the races and ready to go fly again. Um, and then obviously very simple firmware process as well. You just plug them in, run it, select each device, and you're good to go. 
so the software is also very, very customizable, very, very easy to use. It looks daunting, but it's really not once you get going. Uh, you can set up delays, uh, time delays of how long a button is pressed. Um, I believe there is a way to set up um, multiple triggers in a single uh, or multiple keystrokes. It has a ton of stuff here. Um, and I'm really trying to stay high level here on purpose because we could do an entire video on just this software um, and probably still run out of time. Um, because it, it really is, it's, it's extremely robust, extremely robust um, and, and very customizable. And it gives you the ability um, to configure it to just about any simulator or game you want. Uh, for example, there are some games that only um, honor or recognize 32 positions, 32 buttons, anything more than that. And they won't. A lot of the older games are like that. Um, anything more than that and it won't work it so you can actually configure the other buttons to be recognized on a second profile I mean it just it goes on and on guys I could talk about this all day long with this stuff it, it really is uh, very impressive so all right so getting into my final thoughts here guys the Verpal products are expensive as we have said and that's going to be everybody's main concern and I totally understand that especially given how expensive everything in the is these days um, but again, I can't stress enough the quality of the builds, the quality of the builds and the customization options and the free range really to set these up to your desire uh, with very minimal effort. I mean, it really, it doesn't take that long to get them up and running, especially in a, in a software like DCS World. Um, you literally just click the button you want and you're, and you're good to go. Um, they are so well designed and so well made and you have so many different um, options with these and they're so comfortable. Uh, that was one of my biggest things is the comfort of these is, is outrageous. Um, so yeah, uh, my final thoughts on these are they are absolutely worth the money as long as you can do without breaking the bank and they're absolutely worth the wait guys, depending on the time of year availability of product, um, and, uh, you know, all that good jazz with manufacturing, um, some of the stuff can take a bit to get, to get out to you, depending again on the time of year. Like right now, I believe there was about a two, two and a half month lead time from the time you purchase it to the time you see it at your door. And I'm telling you. They are worth every single penny. If, 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 if you're okay with the cost and you're okay with the build quality, these, these are what you want as long as you're willing to possibly wait a little bit of time for them. But, uh, they're night and day. And again, coming from a die hard Thrustmaster fan. And you guys got to remember right now, I just checked earlier today, the Thrustmaster Warthog set is running almost $600 now. So they're catching up. They're not as cheap as they used to be. When I bought my Thrustmaster Warthog, it was $400. Um, and so at almost $600, um, you're really, you're really not getting what you used to get with Thrustmaster. And, and that's sad for me to say, I'm not trying to put them down. I'm just being giving a completely honest comparison here um yeah uh, verbal verbal takes it for me um and so i just wanted to share you guys uh, or share with you guys my final thoughts on these products i'm sure you guys will be seeing them again and again in uh, the cockpit videos as we keep expanding on the cockpit but very very grateful that i was given the opportunity to review these um, i'm going to be looking at picking up the verbal helicopter collective set um, so that way you guys can see those as well because i think that's going to be another major game changer given the quality just of these as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe and healthy, and I will see you in the next one.